All right, in this video, what we're going to be going over is how to analyze data from a between subjects experiment when your independent variable has more than three groups. So just to give you a quick outline, we're going to go over what the data file needs to be set up as, or excuse me, how the data file needs to be set up. Then we're going to move into descriptive statistics, go over how you can calculate a one-way ANOVA and R, conduct post hoc testing with Tukey's HSD, and then use ggplot to create a data visualization. So, without any further ado, here we go. So when we look at our data file, our data file needs to be set up in what's called long format. So this is data from a hypothetical experiment looking at the effects of caffeine, either a zero milligram dose, a 200 milligram dose, or a 400 milligram dose and its effects on energy and concentration for our two dependent variables. So what you'll notice is that essentially all of the conditions are stacked, so that we have one energy for variable, and then we have a second variable that actually specifies the condition that it's in. And the same applies for concentration as well. So let's get into our descriptive statistics. So I'm actually going to use a package called psych because it has a nice function called describe by that will allow us to calculate descriptive statistics for data in long format, breaking it down by subgroup. So the first argument that we need to enter is the variable that we want to have descriptive statistics calculated for. In this case, let's say energy. And then our second argument, actually, we need to specify the group or what variable has information on the different conditions. In, it. in this case, it is the dose variable. So we run that line of code, and then we can see here are the descriptive statistics for the zero milligram dose. So we can see the means 3.4, standard deviation of 1.1, and then a host of other descriptive statistics as well. The 200 milligram dose, mean 4.53, standard deviation 1.2. The 400 milligram, mean of 5.7, standard deviation of 0.88. So descriptive statistics, nice, quick, and easy. Now we're actually going to move on. Actually, one thing first you'll probably want to save these descriptive statistics somehow. Now, if we run the line of code just like this, it'll print it out to the console. However, we can also save the output of this function to an R object, in which case we now have energy descriptive. So when I run this line of code, it still runs the code and actually the values get saved in this R object. And when we want to view it, we just have to print out that R object console energy descriptives so that's it for descriptive statistics now what we're actually going to get into is conducting that one-way ANOVA so this is actually a pretty simple process as well so to do this one of the things we're going to want to do is save the output of the AOV function to an R object so in this case, let's call it energy ANOVA. All right, now in this AOV function, the first argument is the formula, where we need to indicate what our dependent variable is, then add a tilde, and then what our independent variable is. So in this case, it'd be energy, a little tilde, and then dose, which is our independent variable. Then we need to create the second argument. I'm breaking across this across lines to make it a little easier to see. The second argument we need to do is specify the data frame that these variables are in. So we run that code and nothing happens. Now, if you were to just print out energy ANOVA, you would not actually get an ANOVA table, okay? It may give you the sum of squares for each for the dose as well as for the residuals and degrees of freedom, but that's not really what we want. So we actually need to use a second function, a summary function, 
and then we're going to do that for our energy ANOVA data set. Now when we print this out, it will actually give us that ANOVA table where dose and residuals, residuals is also the same as your within group variance. So degrees of freedom, 2 and 87, sum of squares, mean squares, F value, and P value. Note that our P value is in scientific notation. So this is 1.98 times 10 to the negative 11. So it is very far below most nominal alpha levels. Now, when we actually want to do post hoc testing, which would be the next step, because we know that there is an effective dose somewhere, but we don't know what it is doing, which groups are different, we need those post hoc tests. Give us a couple more lines so we can see. Now, the function that we need for this is to use HSD to run Tukey's test. Then the first argument we need to specify in there is actually our ANOVA results, which would be energy ANOVA. Now the second argument is which factor do we want post hoc tests for? Now in a one-way ANOVA, this really doesn't make much difference, but once you get to a factorial ANOVA, this becomes more important. So, run that it'll actually give us these different comparisons so for the 200 milligram group compared to the zero milligram group the mean difference is in the first column and then it gives you a confidence interval of that mean difference so 0 0.43 to 1.7 now the default is a 95 percent confidence interval but you can add another argument to the two keys hsd function 99% confidence interval if you wanted to do so. And then the third column is the p-value. So in this case, anything less than our alpha level, 0.05, would indicate a significant mean difference. So here we can see our p-value is 0 0.0004. And so we know that compared to the 0 to 200 milligram dose, we have a difference. We can see the same thing occurring for the 0 to 400 milligram and then when we look at the 400 to 200 milligram we have another significant difference now the next step that we would probably want to do is actually create some type of visualization so we can see this a little bit better so let's go with a bar graph in ggplot so First thing we need to do is call up the ggplot library. Okay, so it lets us know that it's masking some functions from the psych package. That's perfectly okay. So, first thing to do when you create a ggplot graph is to basically just create it. So, in this case, it's graph one, and we need to specify the basic parameters of the graph in the initial ggplot. Function. So our data that we're working with for the first option is the caffeine data set. And for the aesthetics of the graph, or it's what's called the aesthetics, this is where we specify what we want on the x and y axis. So we'd like our independent variable dose on the x axis. And we would like our dependent variable energy on the y axis. Okay run that line of code. Now it saves this graph to in our object so we can't see it. If we want to see it, we have to actually print it out. And now we can actually see that plot. And you can see it's really just sort of the base skeletons. We have the y-axis, we have the x-axis, but we haven't told R what we actually want on that graph yet. To do that, we need to add a little plus sign right after that graph one to let R know we want to add something to it. And in this case, we want to add something to represent the mean. So we're going to use stat summary for the function to indicate that we want to actually calculate a value. This value needs to be a function of y. And we want the mean. Now we need to tell r how we actually want it represented. So we want it represented as a geometric object. And that geometric object, we want to be a 
And note that there are quotes around bar in this case. So we run that again, and now we actually have bars representing the mean value. Now the next thing we'd probably want to add to this graph would be some air bars. So we add that little plus sign to continue to add the next layer of the graph. Stat summary. Now let's get air bars that correspond to the standard error of the mean. This would be a function of data, and it would be mean underscore SE. And then we want to add a geometric object, that geometric object being air bar. And there we go. Now we have air bars at this point, but they extend the entire length of the bar. They look, for lack of a better term, awkward. So now is when we're actually going to go back through and change some of the graphical parameters on both the bar and the air bars. And we're actually going to start back up at the top with the bars. So let's just do something really simple with the bars. Let's make the bars a specific color and have that color be all the way across. So let's go with fill, and then we can go fill, and then we can just add a color. Let's say that color we want to add is blue. We can make the bars blue. Now, you can also input HTML color codes, so you don't have to go with whatever R's default blue is. In this case, let's add this specific one that's going to give us a nice navy blue. So there we have navy blue bars now. Now let's go ahead and go down and modify those air bars. Now the first thing we don't like is how wide they are. So let's set that width to say 0.2. And now they're not so wide. Now you'll notice if you look closely that we have black bars on a excuse me, black air bars on top of essentially um, navy blue bars. Now let's go ahead and set that color on the air bars to be the same. In this case, we actually want to use color and then specify. So this would be number 002344. So now we have air bars that are the same color as the bars. Now this is a basic graph. It does contain some of the basic things. Now, we have zero to essentially six. We have our levels of energy represented. In this case, the axis labels are pretty good. Um, one thing that you often want to do, and it varies field by field based on convention, is to add line segments to indicate which mean differences are significantly different. Now, to do this, we actually need to give ourselves some more room on the top portion of the graph. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to set the y-axis limit. So again, a little plus sign right here to indicate we're adding another layer. And then it's y-lim for the function. In this function, we need to input two different arguments. The first is the minimum value of the y-axis that we want. The second is the maximum value of the y-axis that we want. So we run this code again. We can see we increased those axis limits. Now we need to actually draw some line segments. And if we look back up at our two keys HSD, we can see that all the means are significantly different. So it's going to get a little busy. But the code really remains the same each time. To add a line segment, we want to add that plus sign to make sure R knows that we're adding another layer. And then we need to add a geometric object that is a segment for line segment. And then the first argument that we need to add is the x coordinates we want it to start off. So just so you know, x would be 1, 2, and 3. So we want a line segment that's really going to run from here to about there, not quite all the way to that center. So x1, and then we need a y value that's just above this bar here. So let's go with, say, 6. y equals 6. And then the next two arguments are the ending coordinates. So x, we want to end at, say, 1.9. And y, we want to end, excuse me, that would be x end. And y end would still be 6. So we run that there, and now we have that bar. Now let's go ahead and draw another bar that sort of matches coming across this way. And then another bar from the first excuse me, another line from the first bar to the third bar to indicate that third and final mean difference. Now, we can actually copy and paste that code 
and then just come back in and edit. So if we want to run another bar that's at the same height, but we want to essentially start at 2.1 and then run to 3. So 2.1 and then 3. Now we have that second line, and now let's go ahead and get that third line in there. And this one we actually want to run from 1 to 3, and we want it to be a little higher, say, oh, let's go with 6.5. So we want it to start at 1, we want it to be at 6.5, we want it to end at 3, and we want it to end at a height of 6.5. Oh, I forgot my little plus sign. There we go. There, now we have all three of the line segments that we need to indicate that this bar, or the mean that is represented by this bar, is significantly different than this mean. This mean is significantly different than this mean, and this bar over here is significantly different from the first one. So now let's add essentially some symbols to represent this as well. Now, when we add these symbols, they're essentially going to be text values. So it would be a geometric object that is text. First two arguments are the x and y coordinates we need to specify. And we would like it sort of centered between these two bars. So x equals 1.5. And then y equals, let's say, that bar was, that line segment was at 6, we need 6.1. Then, let's go ahead and break this across lines to make it a little easier to see. We actually need to add the text that we want. Now, it's convention to represent P is less than 0.05 with 1 asterisk, 2 asterisk is less than 0.01, and 3 asterisk is less than 0.001. And if we look back to our two keys, we're less than 0 0.001 across all of these values. So we can go ahead and add that. And we have our little stars, but they're kind of small, so let's make them a little bigger. So let's come back to our prior code. And let's go ahead and add another argument specifying the size. And let's make that size, let's say, let's try 8 on our size. There we go. That looks really good. Now we need another three asterisks right here and another three asterisks right here. Let's tackle this one next. So I'm just going to copy this code and add it on. So now everything's set except for the x-coordinate, which I now need to be at 2.5. Now we have that second set of asterisks. Now let's add that third set. And this should be coming right down the middle at 2, but we'll also need to increase the height of it. So if this bar was at 6.5, let's go 6.6. .6. All right, so we have our graph. If we want to, we can add a theme to clean it up a little more. So that's just the next layer. Theme, and let's go with black and white. So now we have this nice professional graph with navy blue bars representing the mean value, air bars representing the standard error of the mean, line segments indicating which means are significantly different, and then the p-value associated with that statistical inference test right alongside so that you could get a quick um, glance at this figure and understand exactly what the results were nice and quick.